Friends of the Cuchpaquaxis is pleased to announce that on November 1st, 2019, our salmon incubation project was successfully completed. Though we participate in numerous programs during the summer and fall months, the salmon incubation project is one that is near and dear to us. Beginning in 2012, this strategy began as an experimental alternative to our rearing tanks, and before long, it grew into one of our most successful and important headliner projects to date. Our team is thrilled to be a part of a program that aids in the repopulation of such an iconic and important species to this area and province. Our goal is to help the salmon reach a stable population so we can leave this project in the past. With this gentle and nearly hands-free technology, we have high hopes that this project is the much needed push to aid in the return of the king. We hope you enjoy the following video, which briefly outlines our preparations and procedures for the incubation project. Thanks for watching, and as always, thank you for your continual support. En septembre, deux boxnets sont installés au pont du milieu et demeurent dans l'eau jusqu'à la fin d'octobre. Ces filets nous aident à mesurer la population d'espèces aquatiques dans l'estuaire, incluant les saumons qui retournent à notre rivière pour la saison de frais. Tous les saumons attrapés dans ces filets sont mesurés. On prend des échantillons d'écailles et d'ADN, on les tag et par la suite on les relâche dans la rivière. Parmi ceux-ci, quatre adultes sont sélectionnés pour faire partie de notre projet d'incubation. Pour réduire le stress sur ces saumons sauvages, ils sont emportés à l'écloserie de la Miramichi Salmon Association vers la fin octobre. Ceci permet un meilleur taux de survie pour les adultes ainsi que les œufs. Once an incubation site has been selected, our field team installs rebar into the stream. Each location where an incubator will be placed receives three sets of rebar in the shape of a triangle. With the help of a viewing bucket, all rebar is checked to ensure each set is correctly installed. On incubation day, the incubators are manually tied to the rebar to anchor it into the waterway. Once the rebar is in place, floats are attached to help locate each set later on. Les saumons capturés pour le projet d'incubation sont placés dans un bac de transport oxygéné et emportés à l'écloserie. À l'écloserie de la MSA, les poissons sont évalués par un biologiste qui détermine quand les poissons sont prêts à frayer. Une fois la date fixée, un biologiste de la MSA recueille les œufs de la saumon femelle. Les œufs sont ensuite fécondés par notre mâle avant lui et la femelle sont renvoyés dedans le réservoir de transport. Suite à cela, un calcul de déplacement est utilisé et une estimation approximative du nombre des œufs produits est déterminée. Cette année, notre femelle nous a fourni plus de 13 000 œufs. Et non seulement cela, elle était notre plus grand saumon jusqu'à date, mesurant 98 cm. Une fois le nombre d'œufs déterminé, tous les œufs sont placés dans un pot avec une glacière et préparés pour le transport. Les saumons adultes sont ensuite renvoyés à la rivière Kushpokaxis ce même jour.
Once the eggs arrive at the site, the bottles are placed into the waterway to adjust to the stream's temperature. This takes roughly 20 minutes. The eggs are then placed in an ovidine and water solution to sanitize prior to being loaded into the incubators. It is at this time that the tedious but important work begins. Each tray is gently loaded with healthy eggs until a complete incubator is assembled. Following this, the trays are bolted together and the metal base tubing is anchored to the bottom to help lift the incubator off the substrate to prevent sand from smothering the eggs. The incubators are then carried into the stream and tied to the rebar that was installed earlier in the season. In nature, salmon lay their eggs directly into the gravel substrate, which is known as a red. The eggs then incubate over the winter under the ice, but are still exposed to predators and risk of infection from potentially sick neighboring eggs. We mimic the incubation process. However, the main difference being we place the eggs into individual compartments within our incubator boxes. Each egg being isolated and secure provides protection to the eggs from predators, as well as prevents risk of infection. This method also exposes the eggs to natural habitat and environmental conditions from day one, which we believe helps them adapt quickly and naturally to the pressures in nature. Each of the incubators will remain in the stream until the summer. At that time, the boxes will be collected to determine success rates and begin another incubation season. En juin, les incubateurs ont eu assez de temps pour incuber et sont prêts à être collectés. Par ce temps, les saumons sont éclos, sont sortis de l'incubateur et vivent dans le substrat ci-dessous. Notre équipe de terrain collecte ensuite des incubateurs auprès du ruisseau en été et l'évaluation commence. La récupération de ces boîtes offre de nombreuses informations. L'évaluation des incubateurs nous indique si l'emplacement était adéquat, si les conditions de la rivière pendant les mois d'hiver étaient convenables et démontre le taux de survie des œufs. L'analyse de cette information offre la chance d'évaluer la performance de l'incubateur et formuler des méthodes alternatives qui pourraient être utilisées pour mieux augmenter le taux de succès du projet. We are very proud of this project and its successes. Between the years of 2012 and 2018, our incubator boxes have consistently produced an average survival rating of 70 to 80 percent. This is significant when compared to the survival rate of 10% in nature. Due to the accomplishments of this program, we have been able to educate several others on this project. Such examples include informing numerous watershed groups about Jordan Scotty incubators and our experience with the project, organizing workshops to better educate these groups about proper installation methods, Participating in the 2019 Green Fair, which provided an opportunity to tell students and the public about this project. We have helped UNB Master's students with major research projects, and even received an interview with CBC Television. We believe that this project provides the necessary effort needed to promote the salmon population within this region without the invasive measures of alternative methods. With continued support from our partners, Copet Lodge and Parks Canada, as well as our funders and local community, we, the Friends of the Kutupaquaxis, believe in the strength of this project and are convinced that it supports the necessary push needed for the return of this iconic species. I think she's ready to go now. 
There she goes. Beauty. What do you think of that? That's awesome. <laughs>